Mega Caps had a great year. Even the ones behind still posted more than 100% gains, like in the case of Tesla. Still well off those all-time records. But another solid year in the books. Ross Gerber joins us. Who else? President and CEO at Gerber Kawasaki Wealth and Investment Management. Not just to talk Tesla, but some Apple II as we kind of look back on the year and look forward, Ross. So if you could describe it in the simplest way, why did Apple make records and Tesla didn't? Well, first of all, Tesla's not doing anything to sell cars. I don't know if you've noticed uh, now removing the Disney app because of some tiff with Elon and X. So, you know, Tesla is down, you know, 30, 40 percent from the high two years ago while the markets recovered. And, and that's 100 percent a byproduct of Twitter. And we know that. Um, on the other hand, Apple is, you know, doing business as they always do with the vision pro on deck for next year and an obviously very solid you know overall business model despite you know issues with china as always and and of course you know the same iphone every year but uh, i think 24 could be a very interesting year for apple when it launches a new product so it sounds like that spread of performance between apple and tesla you would attribute to the word elon not rates right right okay right, right rates are not keeping anybody from buying a car right now. I mean, the the you know, Tesla cars have dropped in price by over $10,000 a vehicle. So, you know, rates aren't, you know, the issue clearly. Um, and I've you know, seen a lot of car companies subsidizing rates as well. What, what we're really seeing across the board is people not, you know, thrilled with the brand, unfortunately. Um, but also Tesla's making no attempt to sell vehicles and everybody who has an EV, has a, who wanted an EV, has bought an EV. So if you're gonna educate the other 90% of the market, uh, then you'll have more customers. Okay. Uh, do you think this is a, a, a issue that is solvable while uh, uh, Musk is still involved with X? I know that you've talked this past year a good bit that you think it's a big distraction for him. So if that if it, something doesn't change there, so we assume then Tesla underperforms. Well, I think the if you want to take you know, sort of Elon out of the whole equation and you just look at numbers, Tesla's the highest PE stock that we that we own really um, in the sense of you know what are they supposed to earn? Bloomberg says three dollars and ninety cents is a compilation of all their analysts for twenty four, and that puts that PE ratio well above sixty. And when you look at a forward PE of a, great company and our fund GK called NVIDIA with a forward PE of 24 and literally the hardware leader in the AI revolution that even Tesla and Elon buying chips from left and right, it seems like on a relative valuation, NVIDIA is a much better investment than Tesla. So I think Tesla's biggest issue is simply its valuation, irrelevant of Musk and all the other things that he's doing to compress the PE. Yeah, all right. So the valuation here has some uh, some growing into uh, to be done. The Cybertruck verdict, when do you think that'll get rendered? Uh, next year's calendar. I mean, I would imagine a year from now we should have uh, as we should be seeing all the trucks lined up ready to deliver. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, ramping this is going to be very difficult for Tesla as a new vehicle as They've struggled with every new vehicle they've launched, and this is a new type of metal and stamping process and new technology. So I'm really excited for what's in the Cybertruck and, and for what that means for Tesla long term. But the adjustable market for this vehicle is somewhat limited in its design. Um, its production, we hope for next year to do at least 50,000 vehicles, but this doesn't really move the needle for Tesla on profits and revenue when you look at selling 2 million plus, you know, Model Ys and 3s. So, so I think the Cybertruck is really just a cool vehicle and really meant to help sell other Teslas and, and really give you an idea of what's in store technology-wise for the future. But as far as for the stock, I, I think it's already priced in. You almost view it uh, as like a, a loss leader, not like a literal loss leader, but it seems like you kind of view it that way right now. Well, they're charging 120K. You know, they're, they're actually, it's the opposite. They're, you know, the people buying these first Cybertrucks are making a nice $20,000 donation to Tesla. So it's sure. it's not a loss leader at all. In fact, I would argue the opposite. This is where they're trying to make some margin. Right. Okay. Uh, when we look at products a year from now, what do you think we'll be viewing as a bigger success? Cybertruck or the Apple headset? Oh, you know, we're having a bet in my office right now who's going to sell more 
Apple Vision Pros or Cyber Trucks. And I, I took Apple. I think Apple's going to make more Vision Pros than Tesla's huh. going to make Cyber Trucks. But you know, now I might be wrong. So we'll see. But but I think they're about the same. You know, I think we'll see about the same types of units. I think when you talk about impact from technology on the future, I think both products are incredibly cool and impactful in their unique ways. And and I think they're, you know, they're two of my top, they're in my top five holdings, you know, Apple and Tesla, and they're long-term investments for us that we plan on keeping for a long time, despite Musk's desire to, I guess, compress the PE. But, uh, you know, I think over time, these are two of the most impactful products we'll see over the next five years. Okay. Uh, for Apple next year, uh, what uh, do you think, if any, the impact of the salt watch decision will be? I mean, it's kind of interesting, the news coming out uh, this week, uh, because arguably, I mean, look, I, I'm not the expert on all the details, but it kind of seems like there might have been uh, a breach of patent here when they hired people working for uh, uh, this company, Mosimo. I mean, that's like that's that's pretty frowned upon in the tech world. Yeah, I mean, just because they pulled the watch itself makes me think they're guilty. That's exactly you know? what I'm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, That's what I'm thinking. And too. and so they don't want to increase the damages by continuing to sell the watch that they're now going to have to pay a royalty on per you know watch. I don't know where this goes. It's obviously non Apple like to have this kind of thing happen. Um, that said, I, I don't want to jump to any conclusions, and these are really just issues about money in the end more than the product. But the fact that they've pulled the product, you know, is not a great thing. I don't know if it moves the needle a ton, but but once again, Apple's got a lot of challenges in front of them for sure. It's a big, mature company. Tim's done a great job over the last decade, but he certainly played out anything Jobs has ever created. And as they launch new products and deal with China and, and deal with the challenges of a, a very mature product uh, you know, lineup, um, you know, Apple's going to have to pull some new things out of their hat. And I think Vision Pro is exactly what they need to do it. All right. I know you like that. So uh, it'll be fun to see which one has a more successful. Uh, yeah, hopefully I'll have both, right? I'll have a Cybertruck right. and my Vision Pro next year. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're going we're gonna to be hitting you from the road. All right, uh, let's do it because you put Tesla in auto, you know, uh, pilot, and you put on the on the uh, yeah. Apple headset, and you're just locked in, baby. Uh, you yeah, can crush just can't watch Disney that now. way, right? But no Disney. All right, yeah. thanks, Ross. Appreciate it. Happy holidays. Yeah, thank you, Ross Gerber, Kawasaki Wealth and Investment Management.